Chris Lavelle, uh, I'm a walk-on point guard for Syracuse University. Uh, I'm a grad student at Whitman School of Management at Syracuse, and uh, this is my final chapter here. I started playing the game of basketball when I was, when I was honestly probably 10 years old. All my older brothers and older cousins, uh, they, played, they played the game. Basically, the, the game has been prevalent in my life, uh, pretty much my entire life. I met Chris probably when I was in about fifth or sixth grade, just at the Mellow Center at practice or Manly Fieldhouse, whatever it was. We played on the same AU team, the Syracuse Nets. That was probably uh, around eighth, ninth grade, maybe. As a sophomore in high school, I uh, got moved up to varsity at West Tennessee. Uh, I did pretty well to finish my junior year, and then senior year is really where I, I took off. I, I, uh, I made all league honorable mention. I was the varsity captain. I, I led my team in assists and steals. And I was second or third in scoring. I decided to go to St. John Fisher um, because it was a good academic school and uh, also it was, it's only an hour and a half away from Syracuse so my family could still come up and watch me play. I, uh, I was very close with my mother. I, I'm very blessed that she raised me the right way. Um, growing up she, she was there for me every day through, through, all, my, through all my struggles, through all my successes. Um, she, she basically laid the foundation for me and my brothers uh, to, be, to be good men. My mother was uh, an administrative assistant uh, for Syracuse University men's basketball for 13 years. Coach Bam said she was the heart and soul of the program. She took care of everything for me, and you know, if I forget something, she'd call me at 11 o'clock at night and say, here, you didn't got to do this or that. And I called her really any time of the day, 24 hours. Kelly was one of the nicest ladies, people I've ever been around. In the office, and she'd always, you know, be there helping us if we needed something or talking to us or whatever it was. She never found fault with anybody or anything. She just was that kind of positive person. She was truly a special lady and just one of the kindest people you'll, you'll ever come across. Maybe when I was in middle school, I found out that she had, that she had breast cancer when I was really young, but obviously they didn't tell me because they didn't want to scare me. In 2016, uh, her, her cancer came back and uh, eventually it spread. Uh, throughout her body and um, she was diagnosed with uh, small cell lung cancer. At the time I was at St. John Fisher and um, I was trying to balance uh, athletics and academics as, as well as drive back uh, from Syracuse to Rochester to visit her at Krause Hospital and um, I was just in awe. I was amazed at how uh, she, she fought it. She was so resilient. She had people visit her all the time. She would always put on a smile uh, for people, even though she was going through so much. I remember just really being devastated about it. Just, um, you know, initially I kind of thought about Chris, I think, and just wanted to check on him and make see how he was doing. I can't really imagine what he was going through at the time. And, you know, I just felt really bad. It couldn't have happened to a better person. That was uh, honestly some of the toughest years of my life, to be honest with you. I think it, like when I'm 40, 50 years old, it still might be one of the toughest years of my life. I, uh, I was trying to increase my role at St. John Fisher in basketball. I was in business school there, which wasn't easy. And um, I just, I had days where I couldn't focus on basketball or schoolwork, and all I could think about was her. I had to miss practice, I had to go visit her and be with her. and. Uh, and I don't regret that at all. I, I wanted to spend as much time as I could with her. I wanted to maximize the time I had with her. And, um, but it was some of the most difficult years of my life, honestly. And um, I think it helped shape, uh, shape me to who I am today. My mother passed away on uh, August 18th, 2017. Um, 
and she was surrounded. She was on bed rest in my living room. She was surrounded by me and my brothers and all my cousins, aunts and uncles. Um, it was the hardest day of my life. Uh, it was the hardest day for our family, for all of our family. And uh, I think that will be the hardest day of my life um, forever, honestly. She, she was a warrior. She just, she fought that and right until the end. And uh, I was, I'm just, I was so proud of her for that. And uh, I'm, uh, that's, that's all I got to say, honestly. I was one year away from getting a marketing degree at St. John Fisher, but I just felt like that, uh, that this was part of my purpose in life, part of my calling was to, uh, to transfer to Syracuse and, and honor my mother's legacy. Uh, growing up, I was always a big Syracuse fan, and uh, I've been surrounded by this program my whole life. Um, I just felt like it was part of my purpose to, uh, to honor her and uh, to carry on her legacy. I had the opportunity to talk to Coach Bam about it, and uh, you know that summer I worked out with the team and uh, I was awarded a ro uh, roster spot, and um, I was very thankful for that. I think Kelly, you know, Chris was always the one she worried about the most. I think the the, the last uh, the last one, or you know, just it was always a worry for her, and I think she'd be really happy to see how. He's come in, he's been a great part of our program. He's done great in school and uh, she'd be very proud of him. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, Chris's mother, Kelly, of course, Syracuse fans know this. She passed away back in 2017 after a fight with small cell lung cancer. Uh, a lot of people in the community uh, reached out um, and it, they were very supportive and they just reached out and said that they were proud of me and what I was representing, uh, not just for my, uh, my basketball, decision, but my decision to honor and represent my mother here at Syracuse. First, a graduate student earning a graduate degree in entrepreneurship and emerging enterprises from Syracuse, number 24, Chris Laval. Chris is the son of the late Kelly Laval Siebert, who was an administrative assistant to Coach Beheim. Chris is joined by his father, Mike, brothers John and Mike on the court. I don't know if people will ever uh, 50 years from now remember my story or not, but uh, I just want uh, people, you know, to look back and say, uh, you know, I did something real. I, I, uh, I did something uh, that is bigger than basketball, and uh, I did this for my mom. So, um, you know, remember me not as a basketball player, but for my story. <laughs>